So all I'm doing is going in. I'm I'm looking for a certain number to purchase. Like I would say, fifteen to twenty k below what the market's selling for. So and this uh, is for the land value. I'm land, not sure. Right? Okay, right. got it. Okay. Sometimes, like the realtor will send me leads that have uh, plans already that went through the county, which is a plus because as soon as we close, I could start construction. But um, yeah, the first thing the homework you want to do is look in the neighborhood and see what retail prices are going for. The second thing I do is I look at comps of what size houses are selling. Either it's a two bed, three bed, two bat, right? I look at that mm -hmm. and I reverse engineer the process. So I look at, okay, a brand new house sold for say 300 grand, right? And I go backwards. So how much is the land selling for? Say, say it's selling retail at 30. If I buy it for half of that, 15 or 20, I have a discount already. Now I tack on what it's going to cost me to clear off, do the planning, um, survey, land clearing, and, and the build, right, to finish. So if my cost comes in 100K or, like, say, 50 to 100K total all in cost, then I say, man, well, this, this looks like a deal. Okay, welcome to another episode of Affordable Housing and Real Estate Investing. Today... We got my friend Fuzzy Jardine from, he's a local in Hawaii. And when I first heard about this guy doing affordable housing in Hawaii, I was like, I need to talk to this guy. I want to figure out how do you get land on the island to build on? How do you get approvals? It seems like it's so hard because you're so far away from everything. So I am so honored to bring Fuzzy Jardine to the show today. He has been doing real estate since 2013. He has a construction background, so you know he's going to be dropping some gems today. And he is now a ground-up construction developer on a big island building affordable housing for local families. So, Fuzzy, welcome to the show with Dana and I. We're so excited to have you, man. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate investing, man. Hey, thank you guys. Mahalo for um, putting me on this podcast. It's it's just an honor to see other people that have the same mindset as me um, and, and to grow this to uh, help our, our locals in, in our, you know, both in this, uh, what you call areas, right? Like affordable housing is, is just everywhere, right? A lot of there's you got the poor, middle and, and, and rich. So, you know, to, to be on this with you guys is just just a blessing and thank you. So yeah, I mean, I started real estate in 2013. I was a window cleaner at that time. And, um, you know, I was making about $15 an hour and this radio station came on, the, the commercial came on. I was like, flip this house. We need somebody to be part of our team. And I was like, I think that could be me. So I went to that event. It was, uh, you know, called at that time. It's well, not at that time. They're fortune builders right so so i i knew they were going to sell something so i did go and i paid uh, i think it was like 500 bucks for the next event after i went because everything they said at that um two hour event was just making sense to me and at 15 bucks an hour i knew i needed something more for me and my family because that that wasn't going to cut it so um you know long story short i had a job i had credit their uh program's not cheap so it was $26,000 to become a platinum partner on their program. So luckily I had a, a loan at 20 grand and then I had like $6,000 of credit card and I slapped it down. And wow. uh, that's how it started on the, you know, educational part on, on, on uh, you know, with fortune builders, which was the best decision. Um, I, I call it like, like this, like, you know, I, I I threw money that wasn't mine on the table and burnt it because I knew if I, I knew that once I paid that money and did what they told me to, it was going to turn out positive. So here I am today. <laughs> wow. I, lo I love that, that you just knew, you know, when you yeah. know, you know, there have been a couple of occasions with me career wise and real estate is one of them where, uh, as soon as I found out about multifamily investing, when I told the story before, my brother introduced me to it. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then we paid 20 grand to get in, into our right. mentorship academy without even hesitating, really. And the rest is, is history. So good for you, man. That's, that's, 
that's a huge leap of, of faith. So once you put that money down, what was that? What was that? Uh, what was that educational program like? Was it a month long? Was it six months long? Or go a little bit in depth on that, and then how you took that knowledge and actually got started with your first property or whatnot. Okay, yeah, so awesome question because it it did um, they they lay out a whole program right for you. Um, one thing I want to mention that when I did pay for it, I, I took, so in Hawaii, if you if you have Hawaiian blood, you can, you know, um, get business loans or personal loans or um, they call it educational loans. So that 20K came from a Malama loan from um, Bank of Hawaii. Oh, it was First Hawaiian Bank, sorry. So I was able to secure that to pay for that part of well, the chunk of the education and then the $6,000 credit. But of course I had a job, right? W2 to be able to pay it, pay it off. But once in the program, they have, you know, video tutorials from, they have modules, different modules for super beginner, what to do and all the way to, you know, advance. And man, I hit the ground running, you know, at that time though, um, watching all the videos, learning, you know, learning the different modules, my parents was going through a, a um, time where they, they couldn't pay for their mortgage. And um, this was like, they would be able to save it, then they would be, go behind like three months and save it again and go behind three months. But I knew that their situation, um, I needed to ask, the, ask Fortune Builders, the heads. So what happened was I asked them um, if they could put me in touch with somebody in Hawaii, because most programs come to Hawaii, they come in and it's not the actual speaker, it's other speakers, right? So you don't see the main guys, you see their, okay. their uh, team and they come, you sign up, you pay and they leave, right? Nobody like the, the fan and his team doesn't come here and hold your hand. They, they actually sell the program, which is a solid program if you put, put, in, put in work, but um, or put in the time to do what they tell you to do, it works. Cause I'm here, right? I'm, I'm telling you, it does work if you put in the time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, the whole, whole time, right in the beginning, I was trying to get my parents in, out of that situation. So they put me in touch with the coaches in, in um, Honolulu. And as soon as they did that, I was able to follow along what, what they told my parents, what they, you know, what options that they had. So we went around driving around the neighborhood, looking at comps, looking at the pictures. So I was able to learn from these coaches from get go. And the, the thing that I did was I told these coaches, like I told them, look, I'm a hard worker. I network really well. I will do everything you guys tell me to for free. And that's how I got, got involved with tagging along with the coaches. Not only that, I had a background of construction and friends that had contractors license. So I could put together a team to fix up the, their homes. So it was door knocking, going to the courthouse, putting up bandit signs, you, you name it, I've done it. <laughs> So that's wow. kind of how, you know, but the kind of jumping off. Yeah, it is a program. So basically all the programs have like videos. You watch the videos, but none of them have like a, a hand holding a hand holding program to guide you to the, you know, to get to your first deal. And then sure. my first deal, we did a, a fix and flip on in corner with the coach, one of the because I was tied in with the coaches and people see my faces and they're part of Fortune Builder students, they they came to me first because I was more of a personable person or they felt like, you know, that they could approach me to get them in touch with the coaches. And uh, one deal came through in the corner side. So me, uh, the coaches and that that student um, teamed up on a, on a project. Um, I think it was like nine months into my my you know my program and you know we got our first deal so that's great that's great and then uh after that like tell me how how that progressed did you then start taking them down in succession rapidly and and you know the second part of that is you know because of the successes you've had and the growth that you've had um Tell, tell us how you've impacted, you know, one or two families. Obviously, it sounds like your parents, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, tell us how you've impacted maybe one or two families in a positive way. 
uh, with what you learned and, you know, uh, and obviously any uh, profit and, 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 you know, money that you've made on, along the way. So, yeah, the, fir the first deal that we did was uh, in Kona. It was a renovation home. It was, it was a beautiful house, but the lady that was living in it got sick. The student was the caretaker of the, the yard. So he was taking care of the yard, and that's how he found out that, hey, there's something going on, you know, and he ended up, we ended up doing a, a picking up the deal with him and using hard money, I believe, with Fortune Builders. They have a, they own their own, like, funding part, right? So because okay. the, I didn't know nothing about money on, on where to find the money, so I was tied with the coach and then the student. So it's kind of in the middle, but I helped alongside with, with the student to um, manage the project. And I think at the end, we all, like me and we, we made about 20 grand, if I'm not mistaken, each, right? So almost oh, wow. for my education right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But during that time, um, you know, the coaches had uh, found, more, like, because I was stationed on Oahu, I live on Oahu, and then this project was in on the Big Island in Kona from a student. But then they, the, the coaches ended up picking up more projects on Oahu, and, you know, I was able to manage those. But then while I was managing those, I didn't get any profits from it. I was just doing everything for not free, but kind of project managing and getting paid for project management wages. I didn't care because I wanted to see their process alongside with the construction side. But Fortune Builders told me, or what I learned in one of the first modules is to to create an ad that says we buy houses. And I created an ad on Craigslist, which is was free. It says Fuzzy buys houses. And the developer <laughs> contacted me, hey, you buy houses. And I'm like, yeah, we do. But in, in my mind, I'm like, I don't have money, right? I'm, I'm brand new to this. So, so who, who am I going to turn to? So I turned to the coaches and I'm like, dude, we might have a developer who's trying to sell a brand new house. And I knew the location. And at the price that he was selling it at was super cheap. And, and it was like a great deal. And I ended up turning it over to them. They, they signed the contract, not signed, the, they, they sent him a contract. But what happened was, I guess he had another investor, which was a coach here in, uh, on Oahu, that he, he decided to go with. So that, that kind of, you know, went away, right? It was like, oh, shucks, I thought that was another deal. But... I always kept his number and kept him in touch alongside with the other projects that we were doing on Oahu while I was building capital, working, working, doing construction with my, because my, my best friend um, has his general contractor's license. So I was working with him and then um, doing the project management for the coaches. But I would say about six months later, I called the same developer and I said, hey, bro, do you still have those projects, um, you know, for sale? He's like, no, but I have a business plan. If you can put together some funds, I, he, he was interested in working with me. So guess what I did? I took that business plan, posted it on uh, the Facebook group page. Like 20 people responded. And then, like, I'd say about five kind of stuck around and then two and then ended up with one couple from Maui that was Fortune Builder students became my first lender to fund the whole project, right? Alongside wow. with the developer. So our first deal was on the big island in Hawaiian Paradise Park. We purchased a lot for, I think it was 20 grand for an acre. And this is like 10 years ago. And we built it all in was about 165 total. It was super cheap. You know, prices was way different back then. Now it's... <laughs> No, it's more expensive, but we ended up selling this house. Mind you, lava was flowing at that time. I think this was like 2014 or 15. Around there, there was a flow. We still was able to sell the house at two. In fact, had a had a also had a storm that came through too, that knocked down all the trees and all that stuff. So it was crazy. Yeah. We ended up selling that home and profiting. I think 100k total between the three of us. The lender who came on board, um, so we sold it for two sixty five. I wish I had. I have facts for it, so um, you know maybe down the road we'll do another <laughs> another um, podcast where we can show actual numbers of of you know that for project sure. and the ones I'm doing now. But yeah, like from there, like you know, is all profit, right? So, but I linked yeah. and 
stuck to that developer and I told him, look, I have some money or I can find money. Let's let's do another project. So I, I had bought another project or a property, like one neighborhood up at about nine grand for a quarter acre. And then he told me, hey, I could I can um I could build the house um for a hundred K. I was like, oh are you serious? Like so what I did was these coaches that I was working with, there's a company called Lencred, L-E-N-C-R-E-D, Lencred. And what they do is they go out and find lines of credit and credit cards, but you pay them a percentage. So say you you need like 200 grand of lines of credit and credit cards. They go out and find it, and and you pay them a you know an interest, and then you get that uh, lines of credit for a year, or a year and a half, right? Some some are different. So I ended up using thirteen credit cards on that one deal. So, <laughs> well, I, I I gotta jump on Dane what? here, dude. You are the most resourceful guy I know. Are you kidding me, dude? Like. <laughs> Hold on, just for anyone that thinks like, hey, when I when I don't have money for a real estate deal, I, I'm gonna stop. Like most people just stop there. They're like, I can't afford it, I can't do it. But you right. just yeah. literally just took that flyer, posted it, and you got 20 responses. And hey, you got one part out of it. It's kind of just a numbers game. You just gotta right. do it. And then you got another deal, you got 13 credit cards. Where are people's excuses? Like, you can't make this thing up. Look right. at Fuzzy's story, look at what he did. Um, I mean, yeah, he he did the work, but he took the chance too because he believed in himself. Man, right. Fuzzy, props to you. Man, <laughs> Hawaii's lucky I, to have you. <laughs> yeah, man. No, but- I, I love everything that you have said, and it resonates really, really, really deeply with me. I just got back from vacation with my, I've got four kids, uh, with my youngest. She's 12, and she's very much, Fuzzy, you and I are very similar. We, we find something that we're passionate about. Right. And maybe there's not maybe there's not enough in my case enough thought put into it. Put your blinders like, on and move forward. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm saying. Bro. Like you, you find it, you're like, yeah, and you get it locked in and you make it happen. And that's why I told my daughter a couple of years ago, I'm like, babe, sometimes, you, sometimes you just have to make things happen. Right, you, right. You have to listen to the universe. You you have to listen to smart people. But if it's something that you're passionate about and and you know you can help people, you know, damn it, sometimes you just got to fight through and find the resources. Maybe you don't sleep at night because you're, you know, texting and calling and, and posting things on Facebook, but you have to make it happen, man. I love everything you just said because it's what I preach to my kids. It's make it happen, find a way to do it. And and the, then the, continue that process. Yeah, yeah. Try, you, you see, when you edit this or whatever you do, like put Len Cred, like L E N Cred, like that's another resource for your your viewers that people don't know, right? That they can go to. The guys will find like seriously, he found the money within like weeks, and I got all these credit cards. And the the best part about this was my learning experience because this project that I did with the developer is where everything kind of went south because he stopped doing work on the project because he uh, had had run into some roadblocks with the inspectors and stuff like that. And then, you know, I'm not sure what happened with him, but I knew what I needed to do because I had 13 credit cards on the line. I needed to finish this project, even if he was there or not. So whatever uh, the in yeah. fact, there was a general contractor that we hired, which I was able to keep in touch with. But what this is what happened. I, I remember now. So he started tacking on more than what the subs were uh, was supposed to be paid. When I found that out, I, was, I, I approached him like, dude, why are you adding, you know, on top of, of, of what we're paying, you know, we're supposed to be paying out. It's costing us more. So I think after that argument, you know, he stopped and he, you know, he went his direction, but I stayed to course. Every, um, everything was paid through credit card, except my, uh, I purchased a lot with my own cash because I had some, some cash. Nine grand to buy a quarter acre is unheard of in Hawaii. But at that time, 10 years, 10 years ago, lots were going for that cheap. So I, I paid for materials with my, these credit cards and I paid the 
general contractor and all the subs because we had the apple the apple swipe thing right you plug it into your phone and just go and i it's crazy that you know i'm telling you guys the story it's it's, it's true that this happened but what happened was because the project took longer than expected um and i had to you know fly back and forth and be up there for most of the project um to get it to the finish line um you know the the interest started gaining after the 12 months so once the 12 months hit like my like payments got higher and higher and i ended up you know losing on this project but luckily his uh, the this this developer his brother was the realtor and his brother-in-law came to my rescue to help get the thing to the finish line and we put it on the market we actually sold it for like 189 super cheap three bedroom two bath home like on in a beautiful area you know the best thing happened was even it was uh it didn't turn out well is i i was able to bind what he did and create my own um brand new development company from that project yeah. right so the people that were i brought to that had the money now i have the construction ability to uh, you know knowledge to build a brand new house from scratch so i i contact the first partners and we we did three or four more and and it yeah. just the, the it like it's all profits right now like i it, it's crazy how all this happened you know it's it's i'm blessed and now i'm 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 here trying to teach like locals or people and you know wherever that shoot it can be done you know even if you're from California, from Vegas, you're from Ohio. You know, I just went to Ohio. Like, houses are super cheap, like crazy. Yeah. Cheap. Where are we in Ohio? That's where I live. You could have so stopped Mount, by. Oh, Mount Vernon. Yeah, my um, my son, my son goes to Mount Vernon for volleyball yeah. scholarship. Yeah, and, and we, we, we're we going to go up there for the next three years. Well, three years. Yeah, he's a freshman there. <laughs> Very cool. I live, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes away. You can stay with me. Oh, next yeah, yeah. Stay with me next week or in two weeks. Whatever. We'll link up. <laughs> we'll link up. Uh, it's it's summertime, summertime, so I think they're going to have a break, but we're we're looking into maybe um, doing a house hack for him up there, you know, buy the house and then have him, um, instead of dorming, have the house and manage it with other students from Hawaii because there's a, there's a bunch of Hawaii students there. Oh wow. okay. Yeah, very cool. Well you paid you paid your dues, man. Like what it took me I'm almost fifty and it took me uh going through uh working with a professional coach three, four or five years ago to realize that not everybody has what, what you have. Ninety nine percent of the people who would have been put in your position never would have gotten past the the, the initial fee. To, 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 with, uh, was, I'm sorry, uh, deal maker or, uh, what was the name of the company? Fortune Builders, right? Fortune Builders. 99% of the people would not have found a way to make that happen, let alone the first deal, the second deal. And then, you know, it was a blessing in disguise that that contractor kind of failed on you because then you got bullied into figuring it out. You lost oh, yeah. money or maybe broke even or whatever. But that's tuition, bro. You, you you learned, and that was probably the best marketing you could have paid for. So you showed that you could get that project to the finish line, you know, regardless of what happens. <laughs> and, right. and now you're off to the races. So there's always, I say this almost every week, if people knew how hard it is to make m good money, to get right. where you are, to get where I'm trying to get, there, there's a reason a lot of people, you know, most people don't have a lot of money. It is hard, and, and, oh. and it takes it takes <laughs> mental mental stamina, emotional right. stamina, and then obviously the intelligence and just the willingness to grind. That it, you don't have to be, you know, some of the most successful people that I know aren't the smartest people that I know. But they're the people <laughs> I'm not smart. Dude, I'm not perfect. <laughs> you, you, me either. I, I, I still live in Ohio, you know. But, uh, no, the, the, some of the most successful and, and uh, you know, however you want to um, determine your definition of success, yeah. they're, they're not, 
you know, the, the smartest people, I mean, they're not dummies, but they figure out a way to get it done and they don't freaking quit. They just grind right. and make right. it happen from time to time. Ooh, so, all man, the gray hairs over here is all from <laughs> the projects that's like, <laughs> but yeah, it, like you said, the grind is real, man. And if people getting in real estate, if they put the time in, you can start part time, but like once you get you know through a first project that that just opens up the doors your mind right it's a mindset thing um cuz in the beginning no, i'm not going to lie to you i'm like dude i have no like that money that i pick, like took on to, to a loan to pay for the education was tough like literally tough cuz i make i was making 15 bucks an hour still had to pay rent still had to pay for living expenses you know, so in Hawaii, a lot of people have like two, three jobs. So I was a surf instructor plus the window cleaner. And then I also did valet. I was a valet driver, too. So, I, you know, I hustle, man. Yeah, I, I know. I don't I put my hand out and take. I, I I put work. And then now I'm a, you know, I give what I got. Like my knowledge is, is in here that I want to start um, putting it out there to other people. Because, you know, why, why only me? be successful. I want to bring everybody else up with me. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So fuzzy, I, I think you have demonstrated unbelievable grit in, in your investment journey and, and props to you for that. I mean, one of the things that gets me going is like thinking about the people that were helping with affordable housing. Right. So on every single podcast, like I try to make sure like, Hey, do you, do you have any stories of families you've been able to help like sell a home to that you remember and yes. it resonates with you? Can you just share one or two stories? Cause I, it's so important that people get inspired by what you do and not just from your work ethics, but this is real, real work that helps real people every day so please share something oh yeah so the the number one thing you got to remember to to take a a brand new brand new home from start to finish there's there's a huge pyramid of people that's involved right one i i, I hire all locals that that do all the projects that you know from from the pin finders which is the survey guys you got realtors the lawyers the escrow company right this starts from them the the, the seller of course and then it goes into the construction, all like all the different subs, right? So huge, uh, huge ecosystem that that is involved. That money is going towards to put food on these people's table. Not only the affordable part, right? Which is like my team who goes out and finds locations that is uh, we well, what we want to do is do our homework first to purchase these these properties at affordable prices to be able to sell affordably. Right. And that's that's not easy. So that part of the team. Um, but so the one one family that um, comes to mind is is a, a couple that came from Kauai that seen my um, well, in fact, their friend from Big Island knew who I was. And I just was just posting here and there of, of projects that I was building. And the connection was through Facebook and they had already secured their funding. So. They were living on Kauai and they, they were renting and they're, you know, the, the cost of living is super high over there. So uh, what happened was I was able to, through Facebook, through their friend that I knew, I uh, was able to hand them keys over with equity on a quarter acre, three bedroom, two bath for $230,000, uh, a brand new house, right? And he has like, I think three or four daughters and they're still living in the house now. Um, but because we went straight directly to each other and straight to our escrow company with no realtor involved, don't get me wrong, I, I, I use realtors, right? But it was I was able to cut that much more cost to be able to give them that affordable home that they were looking for. And their mortgage was way cheaper because they're, I think it was like 3% three back then, right? Yeah. So yeah. their mortgage was super cheap. like. Like fourteen hundred bucks for a three, three, like brand new house, right? And and it, like, it was such a blessing because they're like her, his parents lived there, and we had like a pule or a prayer when when I hand over the keys before they entered the house, and just just a blessing to be able to do something like this, and and I'm still doing it even though the cost 
that when hot is higher and the interest rates are higher, but I'm pounding the pavement with, with a team that is doing cold calling to find these properties cheaper, right? Um, to be able to keep doing it in, in this market. And then wow, another, man. yeah, another family, or not another family, but I, I, with my profits, what I ended up doing is purchasing um, another, uh, like a fixer upper. And I put a single mom in the house and then she's she, at first she had hope services to help her. And now she's, she's using section eight. So she's living in the house free, you know, true section eight and uh, single mom. So she, she's one of the best, best tenants ever. Like, like anything she asks, I, I'll do it. Like, so, cause she's, she's definitely taking care of the house. Like it's, it's hers, <laughs> you know, oh, we hear all these so stories. But, yeah, so those two, those two, you know, come to my mind which which has been uh, a blessing so man and i'm so glad you talked about a single mom who's a section 8 um you know tenant because we all heard about the stigma with section 8 it's like guns drugs drama right. but you seem you're like dude that's one of my best tenants right it's crazy like it's not absolutely not true thank you for debunking that right. and maybe one thing i, I want to ask you next is fuzzy is hey, thank you for sharing those stories i'm really interested to hear about what given your background in construction and development we have a lot of new people listening right now and what i'm wondering like from your perspective being so experienced like what do you think is the most important thing to learn first when it comes to developing real estate because it's very different than just trying to buy a single family and renovate it developing is a whole different beast what do you think is like the most important thing that they should learn so like the number one thing like if you have no no experience at all like link up with a contractor right like like work for free like go around pick up materials for them at that home depot whatever it may be try to put time in because then they can teach you like let them know what you're trying to do is learn the construction side because once you know the costs from start to finish whether it's a fixer up or a brand new build a contractor knows exactly what to do from from a to z right from from raw land to you know, getting the permits, how long that takes, all that process. And, you know, I quit my window cleaning job to go work with Simoti, my partner, who's the general contractor. And I worked for him for like, you know, labor. I started a labor sweeping up, doing whatever to, to um, you know, learn and of course get paid, but uh, learn the process of each, each sub. So that would be a number one thing is to try and link up with a contractor. But not only that is link up with, whomever you want to be with or be like right so if you want to be, be build brand new houses or you want to fix and flip houses or if you want to be a mechanic go to that person and ask them like give them your time for free you know because like they're busy right you got to remember like these guys have put this put time they're masters at what they do but for them to stop and take time to teach someone it's got to be, you know, you got, you got to go hand in hand. You got to give something to get something. Some people will teach and some some won't, right? So you just got to keep keep grinding and find that right person that you can relate to or they can relate to you so that you can work together to accomplish what you want. Yeah. you sounds like you were fortunate that you had great mentors that – were ethical and helped you out and taught you along the way. And, and as you were getting more and more involved, more ownership, you didn't have, you know, any theft or, or, or issues like that. It sounds like you, you, you linked up with great people. And that's, that's the only twist that I would put having been in that early phase, a couple of times in my life, literally sleeping on the floor of a cockroach infested basement in Cleveland, Ohio for a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> where I'm making $5 an hour because I know that that guy that I'm going to go in my Walmart dress shirt and Walmart khakis and hang out with for 10 hours in a physical therapy clinic, I know that he knows what the hell he's talking about and I need to absorb every every piece of that. And, and you know, those people just make sure that they're good people also. And that's right. just mental. But, yeah, that's, right. that's great. Um, all these positives and I, I, I gotta imagine like turning over the keys and some of that that's gotta be a 
spiritually uplifting thing and probably more rewarding than than the the, the big paychecks at times. Right. What are you talked about these two or three, you know, your incredible story, your successes. I love showing the scar tissue as I as I like to say in the mistakes that we made. Give us one or two uh you know big or or uh or or yeah I guess big mistakes that you've made lessons that you learned tuition that you paid along the way um just so everybody knows that you're human <laughs> right yeah no I mean hey, in this business there's a lot of sharks around us right they might say they do one thing and then they do another um even coaches that I, I brought on board to be part of the team you know and the on brand new developments even my team went around and and they they tried to do their own thing, try to follow the system. But, you know, um, that's why you got to be careful who, you know, keep a good, keen, like ask the network of people that knows that person that you want to be like, right, to to um, find out more information about, about that or whoever it is you're going to partner up with or work with. Um, the, the good thing about coaching programs is they can give you a baseline or um, what you call basic knowledge to get you your foot in the door. But the only way to get your foot wet is taking a step. Sometimes you got to take a risk, right? Um, in order to, and, and your mistakes is going to be, be able to teach you um, to not do it that way the next time, right? So um, one of the projects that that comes to mind is that one with the 13 credit cards, like, I, I keep going back to that one because uh, one, the, the partner that I had, even though he was the one who was the developer, he had the team, I brought the money. Um, I didn't have a contract with him, right? It's always important to have contracts with any type of partnership that you have going forward, uh, whether it's just, you know, a sub that's going to come paint your house, right? Like, it's always good to have something on paper. Hey, not shaking hands like cowboys. Like, in Hawaii, a lot of shaking hands are going on, but things are not getting done. People are getting paid, but then the stuff that they're getting paid for is not done. So, you know, that's something that I can kind of share. Um, yeah, that sure. has been going on. Like, and still to this day, like, I, I have a big heart. So I give people a lot of chances as far as subs, you know, that they come on board. They do work for me and, you know, they, they might, uh, I expect certain things to be done and then it doesn't get happen. And then I talk to them and then they say, okay, we'll do it. But then it, eventually they keep doing it. So I got to let them go because it, it's affecting, um, you know, the system. So. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, I, and I've been there also. I, I don't like contracts, but now I, I thoroughly understand why you, you have to have them. And my just to kind of piggyback on that one bit of advice I would give listeners would be to take your time with the contract. Talk with that lawyer. Understand the ins and outs of that, even if it's just a one pager, you know, for a for a subcontractor. But make sure it covers you entirely and and really stop and think about what that contract is trying to enforce and ways that uh you could get screwed for lack of better terminology on the deal and to make sure you're covered on that so that when you terminate that person for cause you're covered legally um and and you can always reference you right. know that so for, contract. come to mind i have a had a project in the beginning like those two projects side by side houses and I, I went the cheap route, right? I hired somebody that wasn't licensed, a plumber. He was borrowing somebody else's license. I didn't have a, I didn't have a contract between me and him. We finished the project, sold the two houses. One week into the people living in the homes, both homes flooded, right? And uh, it had to come out of my pocket to redo all the flooring and i contacted the license contractor that the guy um borrowed and um yeah he he they came back but i i had to pay for for to fix it to, to make it correct right i didn't like these brand new homes that people were living in and and it, 
they were walking and the water was coming up through the laminate flooring now. And laminate flooring swells up, right? So we had to redo both houses, all the flooring. So those oh kind my of things, you know, going like I would say always try to hire, not try, but the best thing to do is hire licensed contractors, subcontractors, and um, you know that they're insurance, they're insured too. Got it's it. So important. make sure that you vet them yeah. really well because that's a problem I've heard with right. real estate investing in Hawaii, Fuzzy. It seems like it's very hard to find labor in Hawaii unless we know somebody like you, Fuzzy. And it's Otherwise, like, I have no confidence. I I bet. Oh my god, you guys honor your own little island out there. <laughs> um, so Fuzzy, this is, might be a good lead into this next question is. You know, what does the process look like to develop affordable housing in Hawaii? Like, can you just share with the listeners so that sometimes when you talk about development, it's really such a big idea and people don't really right. understand it. People just see like, oh, there's a hole in the ground. Sometimes there's like big poles coming down. That's what people think development is. What does development look like in Hawaii? Can you just walk through some of the high level steps on what it takes to actually do a development deal? And then why are you going through the steps? I think it would just be helpful for you to point out like maybe one thing like, hey, people... For this step, you definitely want to make sure you have a good contractor. Or for this step, you definitely want to make sure you talk to an architect. Something along those lines. Help us understand the process a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll dumb it down to the to the dumbest, like like me, dumb. Um, so on Oahu, Maui, and Kauai, affordability is out the window. Like, you know, and on Oahu, million dollars buys you a piece of crap home that single wall, the termites are are holding up the house. So as far as affordability, now I think affordability, the the I guess the state or developers here are going up. So they're they're buying um land that can build uh you know like condos and then they're 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 creating you know affordability that way, but it's still not affordable. You know, studios are selling for 350 or more, like studios now, and 300, 400 square feet. Like, it's crazy. Oahu is just crazy. But as far as the last place in Hawaii, it's it's the, um, they call it Hawaii Island, which is the big island. Still got lava, right? Lava is active. Um, and um, there's areas that, I see that that's been some um, that I've been working in or building that's already um, land that's been subdivided since the 50s. So all I'm doing is going in. I'm I'm looking for a certain number to purchase, like I would say 15 to 20k below what the market's selling for. So and this um, is for the land value. I'm land, not sure. Right? I okay, right. got it. Okay. Sometimes, like the realtor will send me leads that have. Uh, plans already that went through the county, which is a plus because as soon as we close, I could start construction. But um, yeah, the first thing, the homework you want to do is look in the neighborhood and see what retail prices are going for. The second thing I do is I look at comps of what size houses are selling. Either it's a two bed, three bed, two bat, right? I look at that mm -hmm. and I reverse engineer the process. So I look at, okay, a brand new house sold for say 300 grand, right? And I go backwards. So how much is the land selling for? Say, say it's selling retail at 30. If I buy it for half of that, 15 or 20, I have a discount already. Now I tack on what it's going to cost me to clear off, do the planning, um, survey, land clearing, and, and the build, right, to finish. So if my cost comes in 100K or like say 50 to 100K total all in cost, then I say, man, well, this this looks like a deal. So that's kind of how I, I gauge. So like I look in different neighborhoods, not only the ones that I'm working in, but I look at the ones that's working. And I know that the days on market are under 30 days. But they got to be at least, you got to have at least three companies comps or comparables of houses that sold in that area that's brand new and and the days on market is lower the longer the days on market or if there's no comparables in that neighborhood now you got to go in and, and create the comps 
Wow. So that's a, that's a pretty nice and simple way of explaining your acquisition strategy. Right. You mentioned a little bit about like the getting the permits and the zones and, and all that stuff. Like what does that process look like in Hawaii? Is it hard? Is it straightforward? How long does it take just so people can understand a little bit and engage like, Hey, how much work right. is this really? Right. So, I mean, you got to remember too, um, it's, it's easier to pick up a house that's already built. <laughs> right you, it's easier to just pick up something and, and fix and flip it right or fix it and, and keep it um but a brand new build takes um planning right planning and then permitting process so on the big island currently because i'm i'm using pre-approved plans which is plans that were um put into the county's hands they looked at it and they approved it for a whole year they approved it for a whole year you can uh, use the, uh, those plans as many as times as you want. So pre-approved plans that I'm building are two, one bedroom, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms, and I get my permits within three months. Oh, okay, wow, that's okay. that's pretty good, man, on your side. And these pre-approved plans were plans that you developed yourself too. Um, no, so there's a company that uh, that I use, HPM, and I go to them for planning too mm -hmm. because they already got the plans and got it. You know, it's a it's a kind of like a spec home, but you know when I do all my finishes, of course I, I put in nicer finishes. Yeah. Um, and, and that that makes a lot of sense because this is like the shortcut, right? Stop trying to create a, something completely yeah. brand new because people right. underestimate how much time it takes to get a plan approved. You're cutting that timeline down dramatically. So props to you for you, thinking about it that way. You can always like say you get the pre-approved plan, someone purchases home. You can always add to what you have to make it more custom. I, I still do custom houses, but they take about six to nine months to get my permits, right? So while you're waiting for your permits on Oahu, Maui, or Kauai, there's certain laws like Honolulu, you can't start building until you get a permit. Wow. So like Big Island is a little bit more relaxed, so you can do, you can kind of grade, you're not supposed to, but they, you, get, you can get away with it by clearing the lot setting your foundation right if you're doing like we do a um, slab slab on grade and um yeah it's it's the pre-approved process i'm not sure if they have it in Ohio, wherever everyone is at but is a good question that you can ask your county anybody's county and see if they, they would do the same thing right hey we have this set of plans we want to build 100 of them or 50 of them would you allow us to submit this you guys review it and then we pay you a fee for it and then use it over and over and over for a year or whatever it may be. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before. I, that's something that, that I just learned too. I've got a buddy, well, a guy who built my house, he's a developer. Uh, yeah. the next time we go out for a, a an old fashioned or a, or a, or a beer, I'll have to, I'll have to ask him that for sure. <laughs> and the, the entrepreneur in me is, is thinking, well, as you're talking, I'm thinking of a thousand different things, but, how could an investor, and like you're saying, you may have to sit on that land for three months, six months, nine months. Right. How do do you take on investors? And if so, how do uh, how do so, investors make on the, on the on these deals? So, like in the beginning, how I did it was fifty fifty split, right? Um, before okay. I started, before I started using hard money, and hard money is like I hate using hard money. But it works if all the numbers is working. Like you can leverage a little bit of money to to do more projects, right? And like just this past year is the first time I use hard money, and, and it definitely opened my mind to be able to create uh, to take one fuzzy and create it into ten, right? So it's like well, you know one of fuzzy's projects to ten in one year was like just eye-opening using hard money so like what what i've done before that was i, I because it's 250 or 350 all in i can find one person to partner up with or jv to fund the whole yeah. project i manage it we sell it they get the money back plus the split in half i've done it that way yeah. i've done a 60 40 we did the 80 20 we've done 12 percent 10 percent nine percent so different um on different levels uh um, yeah. find money right if, just if i say on... 
if I say a couple hundred grand, does that mean I have to go out there with you, uh, stay on the big island until the project's done, and take some surf lessons from you also? Does that is that part of the fee? Well, if you do come, you know, I'm going to throw you out with the sharks now. <laughs> but take your money first. Take your money first. Take yeah, right. Take your money first. <laughs> no, no. Like, so, like, the way that I, I do, it, it's 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 a relationship business, right? Like, like who knows? Maybe we'll be doing a project together in the future um, in, in Hawaii. But it's, like, depending on the person that, reaches out to me like i i feel them out you know so like everybody's not gonna be able to work with each other right (laughs) Right. who knows you guys you know might say hey fuzzy we don't like that guy no more (laughs) but (laughs) like you know it, it is a relationship business but like what i'm doing is there's not too much people doing in hawaii and like for me it's not about the profit but it's about the, the being able to build as affordable as I can to keep either locals or families to, to purchase their dream home hey, in Hawaii, right? And um, um, to like rate like I've been raising money through through partners or private money lenders, and um, you know it, it's been working. But the the thing is like now prices of land is going up, so I'm trying to create like a syndication or people that have money to start trying to lock up land so that I can keep doing what I'm doing because it's yeah. once this recession is done, which I think is not even a recession, like people are still buying the houses from us because we're dropping the prices and giving credit back. So we're this past three houses we sold was at 330,000 giving $10,000 credit to our buyers to buy down the interest. Wow. Right, it's a brand new home in Hawaii on a quarter acre, so people are still like still buying in this market. Like, people think that hey, like because of the recession, you should pump your brakes. There's other builders pump their brakes; they stop building. Like, I we press the gas. Yeah, man. Hey, Amen. Yeah. That's when when other people are nervous, you got to be brave, and that's that's. I'm underwriting and looking at more deals now than two years ago. And because of that, my brother and I just had a great 45 minute discussion on a 50 unit deal here in, in Columbus, Ohio, where mm-hmm. yet yeah, cash flows a little bit, but the the debt kills the, the profit. Long term, we're looking and, and we see, oh, this is a great equity play, yeah. especially when rates are no longer 7%. If rates drop down to 4%, you know, then, right. then, 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 then we look like geniuses. So, no, I, I'm with you. I think that's a, a brilliant idea. Yeah. And Fuzzy, I love your asset class that you're working on, right? It just shows the world that there is a profitable play no matter what the recession cycle is you are creating a product that is in high demand it's entry level and people talk about affordability but your your homes are affordable that's what makes you stand out amongst all the different people that are still investing in real estate I'm, right now. I'm, so i'm actually building houses like as cheap as the states are right like like the, like the prices that i'm i'm able to build because my system has been uh like the system just it's just working because of the cost of the land and the cost to build these homes. Like it's it's the same house over and over and over. Like I have like three different plans that we use. Mm-hmm. And it's just like there's there's enough equity, even if we drop it even significantly, to still walk away with 20k, right? I'm not actually hammering, I'm 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 managing all these projects, but so say 20k times 10 or 20 that adds up right that's coming yeah. into my pocket instead of making 80k 100k right there's enough buffer so when i do my homework we go in knowing that we have at least 100k buffer to be able to sit back um drop the price lower to give that homeowner or home that buyer um get some equity when they buy it from us a lot of the homes, when we do list it, we're listing it 20 or 30K below what the retail is or what the appraised value will be, plus giving them kickback for closing costs and all that stuff. 
Man, Fuzzy, I got to do a disclaimer right now because you might go viral, man. This is not financial advice, but you might go viral with how good you're doing. I mean, you just create, you're de-risking the process because you are lowering your acquisition. You're buying the right deals and you've built an engine that's just so well oiled that you're just hammering out all these homes. Uh, Maybe the next question I got to ask is like, I know you're working on a pretty big development deal right now. Can you share with us the numbers? Like what... Did you buy the property a lot at? Uh, how much are you going to put into for renovations? And what do you think the actual profit or return is going to look like from this project that you're working on? Oh yeah, so like like I'm like I just said earlier, like my all-in cost is from two fifty to three fifty all in for the the smaller houses that we're building. We are building a little bit bigger homes for the you know the next level of of families that can purchase in that price range. But our end numbers are like three sixty five, three fifty. The 330s were on properties that were kind of like in more uh, like cinder roads, right? The roads is not paved. So we dropped our prices even more. So, but the numbers that I'm looking at, like the projects that we're working on, is like our all in is about 250 on our smaller projects on the quarter acre. And then we're in like 350 to 450 on, on the ones that were on an acre that we're building 1,600 square foot. Uh, three bedroom, two bath total is like twenty two hundred square foot, and you know we're we're at like four four ninety five to five fifty for that sale price. But you get an acre, you get a bigger house, you you know, in, it, you can build another house on an acre um, in in Hawaii. So on on Hawaii Island, they have a, they just you know have a new a new code where any any people that own one acre lots you can build actually two houses on it right you can't subdivide it in this, this in these areas but you can have two homes on an acre wow so for the small homes have i heard you right you're all in is about 250 you're selling right. them for about 330 so about like an eighty thousand dollar spread yeah, 330 to like 365 depending on if you're, we're on the paved margin, road yeah. it's gonna go up a little higher because of the, the uh, convenience right wow so yeah. this seems like you got, I mean, there, there's a reason you're making it work because you have developed a system with good contract that you can keep your build costs low and you are actually still selling these homes at an affordable price that as you're in demand. And how many are you working on right now? Like 10, 20? Yeah, you know, I've got a couple, like a few in escrow, a few we just sold, um, but total is about 30, 30 projects. Wow. And, and you good know, you. We're, in the, we're still in escrow to, purchase we're in um i have a uh, cold caller who's locking up contracts to purchase these lots mm. way cheaper because the cold caller when they talk to the landowners most of the landowners are not from mm-hmm. hawaii and a Got lot it. of times these land the land just sits right so i guess when she calls them she talks to them about what we're actually doing building affordable houses and most of the time she locks up contracts with these sellers or people who own the land that's not from Hawaii, that's willing to sell it to us at a discount um, because of what we're doing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I would have never thought, <laughs> and if somebody would have told you that, that you and I could have could build and, and or you know, buy in Hawaii for that price range, I would have never there's no way I would have never thought that, but that's a testament to you, Fuzzy. Like right, you figured right. it out, you figure out the system, you know the ends. Of, you probably have it down to how much it costs, how many nails or screws that you use per per uh, job oh. at this point. Love it, I love it. <laughs> no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, go to the job site. So I'm like, dude, we ordered too much. We need to like cut back because if we're gonna, you know, scale, we want to make sure that like this model, we have the the right amount of materials because. Hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there adds up, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm still working on the kinks, bro. It's still, but it's it's actually like you know I'm not gonna uh, cry about you know three or four sheets of drywall that's left over or you know just. But I'm trying to get my team to make sure that you know we have this list to yeah. be more tight because that helps to keep doing more projects in the future. Yeah, and that's that's something we've learned also. We've got 168 units here in Columbus, and when we had 20, it was cute, you know. But now yeah. there's 168, 
and, and now that now there has to be systems and there has to be people, our team, our property managers, our subcontractors, they have to be tied in and knowing what, what we expect and, and taking ownership of that also. And it's just a matter of finding the good people, like you said, finding good people man, that, that will buy in and take ownership of the project and uh, you know, return the extra supplies or, or not order too much, too much and really, you know, take that to heart and, and make you even more efficient. So um, you're, you're getting there, man. That's, that's, that's great. That is great. Um, I think, I, I think we're on our last question already. <laughs> Tell us more. What What's next for fuzzy and, oh, and give us all your info do your cell job here and, and, uh, and you tell everybody how they can get a hold of you, how they can invest with you, everything. But, but first of all, what's what's next? What's what, what, what are you looking at? Any big uh, audacious goals or projects coming up? You know, I'm I'm trying to uh, head towards becoming a coach here in Hawaii. Um, there's no local programs that is here that uh, people can sign up with to like actually have a you know, someone that's actually teaching that's there, right? It's always like you see oh, either Ryan Pinetta or uh, Grant Cardone or all these guys like, hey, we're, we're going to create this coaching program. We're coming to your town. They're never there, right? <laughs> I want to be that actual person, spend my time, you know, like I wanted a person, like a relationship coaching program that I can, you know, teach people here in Hawaii because I know how hard it is to to make it here. Everyone that, you know, works two, three jobs just to to live in paradise. So that's kind of where I'm I'm trying to collect data or information from people who want to learn or get involved with the business. Mainly not like only developer, but you know, fix and flip, wholesaling and just the just getting their foot wet. So maybe doing something like a la carte you know, if they want to learn certain things, I'll, you know, put together a te team that can teach that program to them. So I'm, I'm working alongside with Zasha Smith. I'm not too sure if you guys know who she is. She's another local girl who came from humble beginnings. And after I linked up with her, just she kind of um, blew me up. And I didn't expect, you know, I kind of was in a shell. I didn't want to share what I was doing but be, once I started sharing and it just start, it's like a, this roller coaster ride. Now I'm on your show, you guys show, and and you know, I want to do more to to give um, my knowledge out there to others that think that they can't do it, and and they can, actually can. Um, yeah, man. you're a testament to that. Uh, I mean, this has been an awesome, awesome. Uh, whatever hour and, and seven minutes i don't want it to end i, I could listen to you talk about these, these stories and i just have so much respect for for what you've done uh from window washing to how many projects did you say i'm going by right now 40? 30 plus projects but that's with working with you know the ones that i have and that's not including my personal ones so yeah. okay and then i'm also working with a, a company a nonprofit organization called Hale o hawaii and what they do is they they get land donated to them and then they, they hire me and my team to build the homes for them at affordable prices, right? I beat I beat everybody's prices because I know um what the end result is to house local you know, house families affordably. Sure. So sure. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Fuzzy, what where can people contact you directly? Instagram, oh. what do you prefer? Instagram, yeah, TikTok? Instagram. Instagram, H I F U Z Z. All High right, fuzz. that's at H I F U Z Z. Hi, Fuzz. <laughs> you gotta DM Fuzzy if you're in, if you're a local in Hawaii, you gotta reach out to this guy. I mean, man, Fuzzy, it's been an honor for Dan and I to have you on the show. Yeah. We've had such a blast, and I hope we can keep in touch with you. Maybe we'll bring you back onto the show after some more projects get completed. And next time, maybe we talk about some of your Section 8 tenants because we love to just yeah. explore yeah. all different ways of investing in affordable housing. And I think hearing some of your stories will just get so many people taking action and just eliminating the fear out of their lives. So yeah, the, thank the you for being such an inspiration, man. Yeah, the Section 8 process is pretty pretty easy once you once you learn it, right? Like the 
the people who are on Section 8, like there's there's a huge need for homes for rentals, and there's mm -hmm. not enough, right? So like like the, the one thing I take away for before we leave um, is there's a bunch of existing homes that are out there priced at almost the same price that I'm selling my new homes. Mm. So people would rather buy a brand new home than buy an existing home, right? So, but I can't build enough for the demand. There's there's thousands of people that are looking for homes that's affordable that can fit their mm -hmm. budget, and you know the my my I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to reach out to as many people that you know might have money sitting in the bank, might have uh, equity in their home, or you know they that that have money that could be put towards a good cause. And of course, all the facts could be put on paper, how their money can be protected, how long, you know, the money would be held, what it's going through, going towards, you know, and, and maybe be part of a section where they, they, they part of buying the land, we wait for the permits to get processed and then we fund them back mm -hmm. the money plus a you know, percentage. So huh, that's a great idea because the whole time I was thinking about like, you know, Fuzzy, why do you think affordable housing is like so hard to solve for? And you just literally kind of laid out the permits, the process. Everything right. is so difficult. Right. Man. So, you know, like what I try to do when we get up, uh, like if we're buying most mostly I've been buying stuff on MLS. Right. And, and because it's there. So I just put in offers and people accept and it takes like 60 days to close. Mm hmm. Sometimes quicker, just depending on the um, escrow company and the agents. Um, so that that period of time, I, I tend to do more of my homework. Not homework, but I tend to jump on mm -hmm. uh, when I know I'm going to develop on that land. I, I start the, with the purchase contract. I can take that into the county and turn my plans in already. Wow. So while we're waiting on, if we stretch the purchase time, by the time three months come up, like I'm close to my building permits. Once we close, I'm already prepping the land, forming. Once you get building permits, then the process is faster, right? So yeah, we yeah, never wow. talk, talked about the process on, on how long it takes. Like the build process is anywhere from like three to four months. So from start mm -hmm. to finish. But the longest process is purchasing land and then escrow to sell. If you're going through, you know, um, to a realtors or on the MLS. Got it. Got it. How are Man, you, all right. How, I got one more. I'm, I'm going to now peak interest. I thought it was earlier when we were talking, but you, you hit the nail on the head. Three to four months to build a 1,600 to 2,000 square foot home. How are you How are you getting it done that quickly? Do you have that? Obviously, we, we understand you've got your systems. You know the plans. Um, right. everything's pre-approved, but do you have that many contractors that are, are working with you or, or how, how are you able to turn that quickly? It's, it's, it's not a like custom home. So it's the same house over right. and over. So that, like the, my framers put it there. Once the slab is done, which is a week, right? It takes yeah. a week to, to get that done. Maybe two weeks at the most to get your slab um, poured. You know, electrician and rough and plumbing um, in the slab before you pour. So that's about a one week process. My framing from framing to roof is about two weeks. So, and then it's right, you got rough in electrical plumbing, uh, insulation, drywall, and finish. So it's, it's, yeah. I have other guys there that, that doing the same thing as me that's faster than me, but they're paying a little bit more. Right. Wow. And, and um yeah, they're like they're doing it in like eight weeks from slab to finish. But wow. You know, but but then, what put, about supplies? Do you have trouble getting supplies to the island there? No. No. So because it's such a cookie cutter system, we yeah. order everything right when we're like starting the, the forming and pouring concrete, we're already ordering our trusses, we're already paid for materials. <laughs> And and having uh, delivery dates to drop off materials for our framers yeah. and yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's so cool. And you know, it's uh, crazy, the crazy thing it's all in here. I did not. I don't have like it on paper, bro. It's it's all. <laughs> <laughs> so if I get, 
if I get uh, eaten by a shark tomorrow, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fuzzy, we could have you come on and do a deep dive on how to build affordable housing, and then you just take those videos and use it as a course, man. Hey, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Fuzzy, Let's seriously. Write a book. Oh Fuzzy's my god! Book. Yes. Book on, uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I mean, Fuzzy, this uh, has been amazing. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming onto the show again. I can't wait to have you back on. We're gonna wrap this up, but thank you, thank you again for coming oh, on the show. It was an honor having you, you on. Yeah. And bro, you got when next time you're out in Ohio, stop. Uh, look me up. I'll give you my <laughs> info. And if you're stuck, it, it won't be a tradition. 